So historically, I've never covered smartphone news on this channel. Uh, it's not really sustainable for a small channel such as myself who doesn't have access to the new phones as they come out, especially during Techtober when stuff changes literally every day. I can't keep up. But then certain things in the industry change, which we just have to talk about. And in this case, specifically referring to our smartphones being turned into tacos. So what we're going to look at is the two most recent announcements that we've had. The FlexPie by a company called Roy Royale. Roy Royal Roy Royale? Or the yet to be named Samsung. I've heard rumors of Galaxy X, which stands for extra screen. Or Galaxy F, which stands for flex or fold. Or... So let's look at what we know so far about the two models and then just ask the question, who did it best? So starting off looking at the FlexPi by, I'm going to call them Royale. So starting off with the FlexPi, uh, which is obviously Chinese for calzone, which is Italian for folded smartphone. So this was announced the other week by Royale on the 31st of October, just a week before Samsung's developer conference so that they could get the news in first. Uh, the main thing a lot of people are saying about this is who the hell are Royale? One of the things you might have seen from them before is their kind of rollout LCD keyboard. Also available on their website, as I've just found out, is a very expensive LCD top hat and t-shirt, which I'm sure you'll never want to wash. Uh-oh. The laundry is done. So first looking at the design of the FlexPi, the way they've gone about the folded phone is so that the screen is on the outside. So when the phone is folded, you'll actually have the main screen on the front, but the other screen will still kind of be active at the back and it's what you'll be holding onto, which does give the design a kind of rounded folded edge. It does not close all the way. It's not like a flush close. Uh, the certain benefits they're saying with this system is that uh, if you're taking a picture, you can see what you're taking a picture of and the other person on the other side, the Instagram thoughts can see what they look like. However, the magic happens when the device is unfolded and the specifications we have so far is it will be a 7.8 inch screen when it's unfolded at a 1920 by 1440 resolution. Like most flagship smartphones nowadays, uh, the FlexPi boasts a dual camera setup, a 20 megapixel telephoto camera and a smaller 16 megapixel wide angle camera. Uh, where things get interesting for this unknown smartphone is the CPU which they'll be using, which is, and I, I have to read this, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 series octa-core 2.8 gigahertz CPU. So to support this folded and then extended format, the FlexPi uses its own operating system called Water OS, uh, which is a variation of Android 9.0, which basically supports the adaptation of single screen apps moving to a larger display. It looks like there's gonna be a couple of different options available for storage and RAM, uh, obviously having an effect on the price. Either 128 gig model at six gig of RAM or 256 gig model at eight gig of RAM. Uh, the battery is gonna be a 3800 milliamp battery, which is pretty standard for kind of the smartphones around nowadays, but no word on how this battery is gonna be affected by the fact that it's gonna to have to support two screens at once and an, an extended screen compared to the same battery being able to support the single screen phones that we have today. Keeping in trend, the FlexPi is gonna have a USB type C connection with no headphone jack, uh, instead supporting USB to headphone jack connector, probably coming with some kind of adapter in the box. So as well as being the first one to announce this, FlexPi have also been the first one to announce when they're gonna start actually shipping usable units to these, uh, which obviously was announced end of October. Uh, they're saying the first deliveries will actually be just late December, but only available in China. Which leads us nicely onto the Samsung Galaxy X, F, A, F, R, E, S, P, C, T. Why do I want to know the weather right now? It's November and I'm cold. So as I mentioned, the Samsung Galaxy whatever was announced just one week after the FlexPi at Samsung's developers conference. So a kind of sneaky way that they announced this uh, in front of the audience, they turned down the lights and they opened it up so you could just kind of see the screens hiding what is surrounding the actual device itself. And the reason for this, Samsung said that the exterior was just hiding their stunning design uh, from competitors and from being released into the market, which could also mean they're not quite done yet. Can't see from the video of them revealing it in the dark. You can kind of make out in this picture here, uh, which was taken by a press member at the earlier practice run, uh, is that the outside version of the Samsung Galaxy whatever actually has quite a large housing unit around it. Big bezels on the top, the forehead, the chin. However, assuming this was just hiding their stunning design, uh, the way that Samsung have gone about this is to have the single screen on the outside of the phone and then when you fold it out, the tablet is actually on the inside, meaning the back, when it's folded, doesn't have a screen on the back like the FlexPi. So they've got one screen on the exterior to fold out to have a larger interior screen. 
Now, because this was just being talked about at their developers conference, there are less details known about this. So let's just cover what we know so far. Uh, firstly, the screen size when extended is a 7.3 inch screen at 1536 by 2152 resolution. In terms of the camera, they released no details, uh, but a lot of the things which we're assuming are gonna be on the Galaxy whatever, uh, are assumed to be taken from current versions of their flagship models, so the Note 9 or the Galaxy S9, which if we're to assume that, may use the same 12 megapixel dual camera setup. In terms of the CPU, what we know so far is it'll be a Snapdragon 845, which actually matches the specification of the FlexFi as an octa-core CPU at 2.8 gigahertz. Uh, for the storage, again, we don't know. Again, assuming it will be the equivalent of their current models, the Note 9 is available at least 512 gig of storage. Uh, for the battery, although we didn't get specific details, there was actually a bit of a talk from Samsung's lead engineer who talked about the battery using the same battery as the current Galaxy Note 9, which is a 4,000 milliamp battery. But what he specifically said is, despite using the same battery, they've worked it so that that same battery will deliver better battery performance, even though it'll be supporting kind of two free screens to one screen and then two free one free screens for two screens uh, and that's about as much as we know about the samsung galaxy whatever uh they've said they'll start mass Our producing these the within a couple months. of months uh, and the release date will be sometime in 2019 no details on price, although we can only assume they'll keep it competitive with the FlexPy in which they announced their 128 gig model, and these are in strange converted amounts, uh, is £1,209, and their 256 gig model will be £1,349. So now knowing as much as we know about the specification of both the new phones, uh, it comes down to the question, who did it better? Obviously this is going to be largely my personal opinion. That's what I do. I drink and I know things. However, I would love to hear from you, so let me know in the comments down below which one you prefer, which one you're more excited about. Uh, but just a couple of my observations. Firstly, with the FlexPy, the fact that it folds the screen from the outside, and you've always got two screens constantly on, makes me wonder if their 3800 milliamp battery is actually gonna last as long if they're using the same kind of technology that Samsung hinted at, that they're gonna be able to make it more efficient. Uh, having two screens constantly on, I worry that that battery just isn't going to be very sustainable, that you're probably going to end up charging it at least twice a day. Uh, as well as that with the FlexPy, the fact that, again, with the folded outside screen, the fact that the back is your screen, you're always kind of holding onto it, touching it with the fingerprints and stuff kind of puts me off. Um, it's kind of like, one, I'm not sure what they're going to do in terms of making sure you don't accidentally interact with the things on the back screen. Uh, and secondly, it makes me think the second you fold that thing out into a tablet, the top half is going to be so covered in fingerprints that you're going to see a distinctive difference between the screens. Uh, and lastly, in terms of the way that both of the phones fold, uh, it's obviously hard to tell but in terms of the Samsung one because they were hiding their stunning design but it looked as though the actual fold itself when it was holding the phone closed that it was properly flushed closed which makes the form factor when it's folded just a bit smaller that the width of the phone will be smaller compared to the flex wire which i mean we can see their finished versions what the design will be like the fact that it has kind of this rounded folded edge which makes it look like it will be significantly thicker and if for some reason it might just be me but their promotional video of people holding that thing to their ear it just kind of looks ridiculous you look ridiculous clearly from those points uh it's easy to tell who i think did it better but again interested in what you think let me know in the comments down below obviously those main comparisons are literally just from the form factor and the setup of the phones uh, in terms of the actual specifications and price, it will be hard to tell until Samsung release some more details. Uh, the last point I want to leave you with is kind of who asked for this? I know the advancements in technology is an exciting prospect, the fact that we finally have kind of access to these foldable LCD screens and what will be available for them. But it kind of reminds me of like the 3D TVs from around 2011, something the industry was trying to push really hard and it just never took off because it's kind of gimmicky. But again, that's just one handsome man's opinion. I would love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts, if you think this is kind of gimmicky or if this is what we've been waiting for, again, let me know in the comments down below. But that's it from me. If you enjoyed this video or found it particularly helpful, remember to drop a like. Uh, if you haven't already, remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. Um, I'm gonna go get some tacos now. Thanks for watching. And as always, I shall see you in the next one. It's raining tacos from out of the sky.